Over the past century, extremely unusual burial remains have been discovered in Peru. The skulls of these remains are so unique that some researchers have suggested they could be part of an unknown species of human. But what kind of humanoid did these skulls come from? And why did the DNA test not only shock archaeologists, but leave them wondering if we're yet to discover a large part of humanity's history? Let's find out together. Discovery of Strange Skulls During the early part of the 20th century, a Peruvian archaeologist started coming across rather unusual finds. Julio Tello is often considered the father of Peruvian archaeology, and he was the first to discover and write about the Paracas culture. This Andean society was named for the area of Peru in which they inhabited. During an excavation of an enormous burial complex in Paracas, Tello and his team came across hundreds of mummies that lay buried in a fetal position. Many of these mummies had red and blonde hair, yet the most fascinating aspect of the remains was the enormous elongated skulls. While Tello and his team wrote about the remains and skulls, it wasn't published in any major academic journals. Thus, his findings remain rather unheard of in the Western world. It wouldn't be until the Canadian-born Brian Ferrister began investigating toward the end of the 20th century that the world became aware of these strange enigmas. The Unique Characteristics of the Skulls Elongated skulls may not seem that unusual until they compare to a modern human skull. But once we place them side by side, researchers instantly begin to question if what we have is an entirely different species of human altogether. While various researchers have tried to write off the skulls of Paracas as mere cases of cranial head binding, researchers such as Brian Forrester have brought in enough evidence to dismiss this claim. Cranial head binding is a process that involves artificially shaping the skull of a child during the early years. This certainly occurred all throughout the Americas, being practiced by the Maya of Mesoamerica and Native American tribes. However, when you compare the skulls of Paracas to modern skulls, there are various genetic differences. The most prominent difference is the cranial mass of the skull. You can alter the shape of a human skull through cranial deformation or headboarding. However, you cannot increase the mass. Some of the large elongated skulls found in Peru have cranial mass that is some 60% larger than modern humans. Another major difference between the elongated skulls and those of modern humans is that the elongated skulls are missing the sagittal suture. This is a dense, fibrous connective tissue joint between the two parietal bones of the skull. Smaller anomalies including much larger eye sockets and two small holes in the back of the skull, which modern humans don't have. It's thought that these small holes allowed blood flow as well as nerve passages. It's even been theorized that the enormous size of the skull would have allowed a brain capacity that is 2.5 times larger than modern humans. All of these findings point toward a skull that is genetically different from anatomically modern humans. So if we can conclude that these ancient skulls found in the Paracas region are not the result of cranial head binding, then what exactly are we looking at? Theories put forth a range from extraterrestrial genetic manipulation to an unknown subspecies of humanoids. But is there any truth to either of these arguments? The Genetic Testing One of these elongated skulls, known as number 44, was eventually genetically tested and the results were rather unsettling. Skull 44 was discovered back in 2012 and weighed 2.8 pounds, making it 25% larger than the average human skull. A few years later, DNA testing was carried out on Skull 44, and it came back with some rather surprising results. According to the geneticists, certain segments of the DNA did not match any known human genome. While some were quick to suggest that the evidence of the extraterrestrial visitations to Earth, Brian Forrester believes that the elongated skulls could be an ancient bloodline relative to modern Homo sapiens. Over the last decade, Brian Forrester has dedicated a large portion of his time in hopes of uncovering the origin of the skulls. Brian works at the assistant director of the Paracas History Museum. 
and his work has revealed many hidden aspects of these ancient, elongated skulls. Brian teamed up with various Peruvian archaeologists over the years, learning all he could about the strange skulls. Eventually, he and a small team decided that many of the skulls needed to be genetically tested to discover their true origins. After almost a decade of trying to procure the go-ahead for the Peruvian government, Brian was eventually allowed to send DNA samples to various labs and universities. When the results officially came back, they not only shocked the researchers, but also began to rewrite the history of Peru's Pacific coast. When the results came back, a vast number of the elongated skulls were found to contain DNA that suggests they originated in the areas around the Caspian and Black Seas of Europe. The testing as well as an expert advice also proved that the red and blonde hair was in fact natural. This proved beyond a doubt that these ancient peoples had come to Peru's west coast from their home in Europe. This would then begin to rewrite everything we know about the capabilities of Bronze Age seafarers, as it has been suggested that the elongated Paracas of European descent arrived in the area sometime between 1500 BC and 800 BC. No matter the date, it seems that they may have been the first Europeans to reach the Americas long before Columbus and the Vikings. Legends of the Elongated Skulls? With the information supplied in recent years from genetic testing, you'd think some kind of legend would have survived in the area about these unusual humans. Well, some, it just so happens some have. Andean myths tell that long ago, there lived on Earth men whose power was able to make rocks move at will or transform mountains into plains. The Gentiles lived very quietly, working their fields and collecting precious metals that they used to make their tools. The story tells that they worked at night under the protection of the moon's rays because they could not stand the sun. At a crucial moment, they discovered that the sun would somehow wake up and its rays would burn them. Fear made them dig holes in the ground to protect themselves, thinking of leaving their hiding places soon after. They hid with their family and all their tools and clothes. The mothers tied the children so they wouldn't get loose, and everyone squatted down. Somehow, they all died underground. That's why people believe that today you can see underground human remains in this exact position. Even the myths of the region seem to suggest that fair-skinned peoples arrived in the region and could not bear the blistering sun of Peru's Pacific coast. So could it be that an ancient race of Northern Asiatic Europeans transversed the sea long before the Vikings or Columbus? And if so, how did this people arrive on the Pacific side as the opposed to the closer Atlantic side? Did they bring knowledge that was unknown to the people of the Americas? Is this why so many cultures began the practice of cranial head binding as a way to initiate the advanced beings who came to their lands? One further thing to consider is that the elongated skulls are not solely confined to Peru. In reality, all along the Andean Plateau and the entirety of the Pacific west coasts of Central and South America have produced elongated skulls. Many of the skulls have characteristics that suggest they were in fact natural as opposed to the product of cranial deformation. Peru has the greatest concentration of enormous elongated skulls in the world. However, the second largest elongated skull found in the world was unearthed in Iran. This Indo-European speaking country in Western Asia has produced its own cache of elongated skulls. Geographically, Iran lies just south of the Caspian Sea, the area from where the Paraca skulls originated. This further implies that the Paracas culture originated in Northern Europe. Brian Forrester has put forth various theories on why this group of people had to leave their country. It's possible that they left during the Bronze Age collapse. Maybe their territory was invaded. Drought should also be considered, but no one has any idea why they traveled to the other side of the world. Had their ancestors been the Peruvian coast thousands of years ago? Do they have some kind of ancient map? Or were they guided there by some unknown force? All of this still remains up for debate. However, one thing is for certain, the elongated skulls of Paracas are yet to reveal all of their mysteries. If you like what we do, support us 
by subscribing to the channel.